Hello and welcome to my workshop. In this video, we're gonna be unboxing this box. Now, let's see what's inside. Well, whatever it is, it's very well packaged. So, let us see what's going on. My trusted knife, cutting the tape open. Okay, let's take this one out and let's see what we have. We don't need this box anymore. Ooh, sign says snap maker, so I wonder what that would be. Okay, again, more packaging. So again, my trusted knife. Now, you may or may not guess what that is, but I'm gonna keep the surprise going until the full reveal. Okay, calm down, calm down. Like I said, it's very well packaged. It hardly moves. There. And let's remove the materials. And let's see what's inside the materials. I have a little piece of um, what it looks like aluminum or aluminium, depending on where in the world you are. I have black acrylic sheet and this reminds me I could use this for my experimental photos with the uh, black solid color acrylic. Uh, if you remember my previous video I took a picture of a pen and I had problems because of the clear plexiglass that I was using so I could use this black plexi to do my tests not just to cut it. And a piece of plywood. Now let's see the thickness of this piece with my trusted calipers. It is 4.7 millimeters thick. Okay, that's good. Well, it says basswood. Uh, but it's 4.7 millimeters as opposed to 5 as they have written here. This is anodized aluminum and that is the acrylic sheet. So <laughs> I kind of rediscovered them. The package. <laughs> now let's put them back in so that they're all together and focus on the rest. There is a tab right here. Now let's see what that is. Ha ha And how do I look now? <laughs> yeah, these are red in color. The previous glasses that I have are green, so I'm not sure what the difference is, but hey, why not? Makes me look cool. And let's see a quick start guide. Now, let me properly see. So, so we have a uh, calibration target right here. We're gonna see how to use it later on. We have calibration card. We have a guide. Very good glossy paper, everything is um, nicely printed. So I'm gonna read that later on. 
Now there is another tab. Let's see what that is. Accessories. And let's see what accessories do I have. So there is a little bit of... Let me see if there is any... Nope, there is no description. I was looking for a, a list, kind of like what I saw for the materials, but I didn't see anything on there. So let's see what this is. That looks like a little peephole. <laughs> okay, it goes inside again. A uh, whole bunch of Q-tips. I don't need to open them up. They're quite easily seen. And a whole bunch of screws, uh, M4 by 8 millimeters. And now, the PS de Resistance. The new 10 watt module by the Snapmaker. And it is a lot chunkier than the previous one. There. Now let me take a few panning photos, or I should say shots, and then I'll move on to uh, actually trial, trial testing it. But before I do any testing, I will be upgrading the firmware on the controller and the Luban software. So I'm going to show you how to do that because I haven't done it and I might as well do it all. Now let's take those panning shots that I was mentioning. So I'm going to keep it aside and bring my computer, update the firmware of the controller. I'm going to show you how to do that. And then I'm going to take it for a test ride and see what comes out of it. So the way to upgrade your firmware uh, is simply by going to the support website and typing in how to upgrade the firmware and you get this little page right here. And there is technically two methods. One is via the USB which is right here, and the other one is via Wi-Fi. Now, my Wi-Fi is not as reliable in the workshop, so that's, I put everything in this little USB, and I'm gonna update it through the USB. Now, if you wanna know where to get your latest firmware, just go to the support page of your model, and you have the software, which is the Luban software, and you have the firmware, which is your drivers. Now, or shouldn't say drivers, but firmware. Uh, when you click on the link, uh, you're gonna get the history of all the uh, pre previous versions of the firmware. I don't know what I'm on, so what I'm gonna do is install each and every one of them uh, consecutively. I don't know if the latest version is cumulative, and that is, it includes all the upgrades that were done previously, or it's just a particular uh, uh, firmware update without touching anything else. So that's why I'm gonna do everything else in sequential order. So without further ado, let me power up the Snapmaker. Let me also position the camera accordingly. To check the firmware version is we go into, I believe, settings. And there was about the machine. So the touchscreen version is 1.8. Controller version is V1.8 as well. So we already saw that uh, the versions are from 1.6. So I'm not going to be installing the first three updates. I'm going to uh, jump directly from uh, version 5 onwards. So let's go into files, USB, let me reposition the 
camera and I said we are going from 1.9 which is right here. In the meantime, why don't I show you how to upgrade the software? Now, I am using a Linux operating system, Debian, and originally uh, there were a few challenges, uh, I should say. Uh, what happened is when I upgraded my machine to Debian 11, the, the support for one of the uh, dependency packages was dropped by the BN. So I couldn't install right from the start. Uh, I couldn't install the Luban software right from the start. I had to do one of two things. Number one, unpackage the package, <laughs> uh, remove the, the so-called entry for that dependency, repackage it again and then install it, which is what I did and it worked and I'm just gonna show you here in a little bit or create a fake package and install it onto the system so that when the installer runs and sees all the packages are in place, it doesn't throw me an error. So let's, uh, let me show you what I did. Uh, so let me change to the downloads folder and execute this command. We can see the dependencies right here, gconf, gconf service, and we're gonna focus on this package in particular, the lib app indicator one. So we see when we download it straight from the uh, straight from the software uh, download site, you know it has that particular dependency. But what I did is. If I can spell correctly. But what I did in my version is I removed that dependency of that package. So we don't see any lib app indicator as part of this line right here. So let me check if the latest version, the uh, Snapmaker Luban 4.3 has that dependency. Going back to the downloads folder, and I believe the package is 3.2. Yeah, it is 3.2, and yes, there is that dependency for the lib app indicator one. So I would need to unpackage, remove the package, package it again, and then install it. Uh, now, this is, I think, only particular to Debian. Ubuntu, which is a fork of Debian, uh, continues that support. And for installing it directly on Ubuntu operating system, you don't need to do what I'm doing right now. Okay. In the meantime, the first update is complete and we're gonna move on to the second one. So I did version 1.9 so let me go here and begin deleting things that I've done so that I know what not to do again so we need version 1.10.0 there it is version 1.10.0 so obviously I don't know all the steps by heart in the, when it comes down to unpackaging and repackaging, so I'm going to rely on good old fashioned Google search. <laughs> um, how to remove a dependency from .deb file. And let's see what happens. So we unpack the deb file. So it's gonna create three things, a Debian binary, the controller, and the data. So we have to unpack the control archive, fix the dependency in control with a text editor, and then repackage it and repackage the deb file. So let's see if I can follow those simple instructions. 
First of all, I am going to copy the file to the documents folder so that uh, I don't mess up. At least I have one copy that is working and the other one is I'm gonna play with. Uh, it's not that I can't download it again, but you know, kind of like programming, <laughs> programming habits. So let's go into downloads. Snapmaker Luban, copy it, go to documents and paste it. And now we will be working primarily with the command line. In the meantime, another update finished and I am going to move to the next one. which is version 1.10.1. I'm entering a split screen mode, so that way I can see uh, the steps right here. So what I'm gonna do is, because there's so many documents in my uh, in my documents folder, I am going to throw everything into, I think I created the folder Snapmaker in here, but let's do that again. So I'm going to throw this in here so that way it is the only file in that particular folder and I can easily um, concentrate on it and in the meantime I had another update done so I'm gonna go with version 11 now which is 11.4 Okay, Google Steps and Terminal. Okay, so we are told to do run this command on the Debian file arx star.deb. And of course, we see that it created the control data and the Debian binary. So that is the original Luban software right here that we see. We are going to unpack the archive control tar.gz and of course it created the uh, control the md5 sums the post inst and the i guess post install and the post rm yes there it is Uh, fixed dependency in control. So we're going to the control folder Or since it's not a directory we are going to do This And there so that was the information that we saw earlier on the screen and There is this package right here that I am going to remove So I'm going to save it, yes, and we're going to double check again, there, there is no dependency of lib app indicator 1. So now we're going to have to repack control file. And that is the command right here. Oh, we have another completed update. So we did version 
11.4 we're gonna go now to version 12 which is 12.0 So we paste the commands. Yeah, so because we didn't have any pre-install and pre-rm, it throws out an error, so it didn't package the file. So what we're gonna do is remove the pre from here and see how it is going to behave. It seems like it doesn't like the <laughs> uh, the bracket, so I guess I'm gonna have to spell the entire word. There we are, and now we are going to uh, to do the uh, packaging, and that is the command. And we're also done with a version update here, and we're gonna go to the next one, which is 12.1. Okay, it is loading. So uh, let me double check now the two the two files by running the uh, dpackage info command. So that is the original, the one that I copied from the website we see the dependency of the package right here and let's see the one that I just created we see that I removed the dependency to the libabit indicator one package and for uh, demonstration purposes I'll go to the package manager And I am going to look for the lip app indicator one app to see or to show you that it is not existent anymore in the BN11. So lip app indicator one, we search and we come up empty handed. So for the BN, you do need to make that step or you need to create a fake package. Uh, I'm not gonna bother with the fake package. I already modified it right here and I'm gonna try and install it. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to try to install the original package. We're gonna see the error about the dependency and then I'm gonna run the second package. So back to system tools, uh, the package installer. Uh, so we go to the opening of the package and we have it in our documents in snapmaker and this is the original one if we try to run it we'll see what is happening yeah see we, we have this dependency is not satisfied and that is the lip app indicator now let's go to the other package package B uh, so that re that's recent let's check this package okay it says all dependencies are satisfied and I'm going to install it of course I need to throw in my password And in the meantime, we have a completed uh, upgrade. So we're going to go to version 12.2. Oh, and this error is because I have the package manager open. So I'm going to close it and try again. <laughs>
Okay, installation finished. Uh, we don't need to keep the terminal open. It says the same version is already installed, so let's go and run it. There it is, 4.3.2. So, um, so this is the way you uh, install the SnapMaker Luban software onto a Debian system. And like I said, that's only particular to Debian. I, when originally I had this uh, issue, of course, I opened up a support ticket and they mentioned that everything is working fine for Ubuntu. So I installed a virtual machine with Ubuntu and yes, everything was working fine. And then I kind of discovered that those dependencies, the libapp indicator is dropped from the BN and I had to do that particular step of removing that dependency. So now you have a way of doing that and using it on the BN system as well. So we are going to have some fun. <laughs> Okay, update successful. So now we finished 12.2 and we are going to go into 13. So it is 13.1. I will be later on experimenting with my little price tags. I'm gonna print a few, see how it goes. I also need to figure out the uh, power to speed ratio so that I don't burn my wood. Instead, I get a nice clear letters, but that's going to be an experiment for offline. So, yes, so that's going to be my, uh, my little sample piece for the video. I'm going to create a toolpath. Uh, we are not going to cut. Uh, let's see, we're going to do a fill. And we're going to go with line field engraving. And let's see the settings for the line field engraving. Uh, and of course, I need to do some minor adjustments so I want to have a nice thick solid colored piece the jog speed the work speed I'm gonna leave as is and the laser power at 30% and we'll see what the result is so we only changed the uh, interval between the lines. So it's going to run one horizontal line and then the next one. And that fill interval is exactly how far apart those lines are. So minor 0.05 of a millimeter, so very close together. So we are supposed to expect to see a nice solid uh, ellipse. Oh, in the meantime, we have a successful upgrade and we are moving to version 13.2. So the other software that I use in uh, laser engraving, that is the so-called light burn. And I know that light burn software is used primarily for the big uh, commercial lasers, but it does have features that I like. Um, and I primarily use it to, to figure out the power to, um, uh, the power to speed ratio. Um, and also it has the ability uh, to have the so-called layers and each layer can do a different thing. So you can have your one design and you can split your design into several different layers and each one can cut at a different, different length, uh, different, <laughs> let me start from the beginning and each can cut at the different depth. Uh, and also you can do fills at different layers. So. Uh, in that way, this is a very versatile software. Okay, we have a successful completion and we are going into 
Now, in the meantime, since I have a little bit of time, I am going to look at the quick start guide. I mean, I know there is a thing about, you know, guys not needing instructions to proceed, but <laughs> when, you <laughs> when you have something that you like and you want to keep forever, you might as well get familiarized. <coughs> So this is an example of one of my, uh, I should say, Q, <laughs> Q wood or Q cards where I did the uh, power to speed ratio and figured out how it all looks on a particular piece of wood. And I've been using this to, uh, to kind of determine what my laser power and laser speed should be. So I have to create a few of those and see what one needs the best and then pick that one for any future engravings. Okay, so we have the specifications, what comes in your package, preparations. Yeah, they do specify uh, 1.7.2, the firmware upgrade. So it says version 1.14 or later. And for the touch screen, it has to be 1.9 or later. So I need to locate where the touch screen version is. So we finished 14.0, let's do, or 14.1, let's do 14.2. Okay, successfully updated to 14.2 and the latest one according to this article is 14.3 so let's go into 14.3 so that's gonna be the final update to the controller Okay, so complete it and let's check the settings about machine. So the touchscreen version is 14.2, controller version is 4.4.17. Um, okay, firmware version is 14.3. Okay, so it seems that we have the most up-to-date uh, updates. So let me take the USB stick and save the G-code that I just created right here, our experimental ellipse. So what I'm going to do now is turn off the machine install the module, plug in all the cables, uh, make sure that the bed is nice and steady. And then I am going to take a piece of wood, scrap wood somewhere from the workshop and uh, do some burning.
Welcome back. So what I did was install the module, plugged it in and secured the bed. And now let's move on to reading the instructions to calibrate the new tool head for the very first time. Of course, I have my phone to take close-ups and I may occasionally move away and readjust the, uh, the phone so that I get the best angle possible. So let's get going. Powering up the machine and of course putting on our glasses. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing that pops up are safety notices. And there we can see them right here. So we're gonna click get started. Oh yeah, we have to check the check mark and then we get started. So the first uh, item on the agenda is the two head focus calibration. We click on the start. The machine has to go home. So the good thing is, even though you have printed instructions, the, instruct <laughs> the instructions also appear right here on the screen, so you know what to do. So now we have to place our calibration card and lower the two heads until it just touches the card. Okay, it's almost there. The idea is when you press, you should get a wrinkle in the card, just like we got a little bit earlier on. Okay, so, and you should feel a drag. So this, this is good. So we're gonna click on next. Now it's the thickness measurement. And for that, we're going to need this calibration tool, which I'm going to place in the center. So from what I read, there should be a laser shooting at this. So again, you have the printed instructions and the instructions on the, the touch screen. So we're gonna start and there is the dot. Let's see if the dot is visible on the phone camera. There it is. So that is shooting straight from the two head. I am going to click the so-called capture on the touch screen. So now that we saw it, let's move back. 
so there I let's also focus here so it already recognizes the dot we click on capture now it's moving the second calibration point make sure the red dot is on the surface of the calibration target measure the thickness so it says successful so it was all automatic so we click next now we're gonna do a camera calibration and we're gonna click on the start but for that we also needed to place an A4 paper and I quickly scramble to get a sheet there so I think what it's doing is just burning a few marks let's do a little bit of a focus on the on what's going on So what it's doing is it's running a few cuts on the piece of paper. So, according to the uh, to the touchpad, it has taken four photos. It is processing them now, and everything is complete. And we get a cake for doing an awesome job. Now let's experiment with the G code that I just created earlier. We plug in the USB. And yes, it did a cut through the paper. So we're going to use this piece of uh, 1 16th or 1.5 millimeter thick uh, veneer. I am going to affix it with this particular clamp because it's slightly bowed. So we are going to just focus on this area right here. So we're going to go into the USB, shape 1, ready, and let's do, and let's do the auto mode, let's see, uh, condition that may cause the thickness measurement to failure, the material thickness is over 50 millimeters or 5 centimeters, the material texture is transparent, which is not in our case. Or the material surface is glossy again not in our uh, case the material color is red or black not in our case
Now it may be a little, I may have to switch back to manual mode because if I zoom in and focus on the particular area, it is sli sitting slightly above the actual bed. So the measurement may not be as accurate. So what I'm gonna do is go back and do manual mode. So let's uh, oh, and let's remove the paper from the actual gimbal. So we're going to manual mode. Let's focus on the touch screen. Not for manual. Tip start to manually lower the two head. So it is uh, basically telling us to use the calibration paper right here and put it on top of the um, surface and calibrate it that way. So I am moving towards this side. And let's also focus on what's going on. Okay, that's it. And I'm going to move left a little bit. So we get our safety glasses, we click next. So now we have to figure out the uh, origin let's focus again on the two head so let's put that as the origin so we click on set work origin and click next and it starts the burn process of that little ellipse So according to the touch screen, let me just focus it right here. Uh, we have 18 minutes remaining and it's only at 27%. And as I can see, it is burning through the wood. So I might, what I might do is actually stop it. I mean, we know the laser module is working. It is engraving, although right now cutting. So once I get into these, probably I'm gonna have another video and we'll see how everything goes. But now I know that when I need nice crisp cuts, it will simply do them. Well, if you like this video, make sure to like, share and subscribe and also hit the notification bell to get notified of my future video releases. Also, follow me on all social media channels, consider supporting me on Patreon and definitely support me for the Great Psycho Challenge where I raise funds for fighting kids' cancer. All the links are down in the description.